So transaction we have seen that uh, transaction is nothing but a program, a small unit of uh, instructions that execute together and perform some task that we call it as a transaction. So every transaction must suggest four properties. These are seed properties: atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. So along with that, we have seen the state diagram of transaction, which include the uh, first uh, state that is active. Then, if the transaction not complete its proper execution, that it enters into the fail state. Once the transaction is failed, then it is aborted, then it is restarted. When the transaction completes its final instruction, it enters into the partial committed. Why? Because still the database is not updated. The changes made by the transactions are in main memory, and that's why it is partial committed. And once the changes made to the database, then on the disk, then we call it as a completed successfully. Okay. So that is the transaction along with the, that we have seen the property of concurrent execution and serial execution. So serial execution means uh, if multiple transactions are executed, then first it complete the first transaction, then go for the second or complete the second and then go for the first. That is serial execution in a schedule. Now there is concurrent in which one transaction is executed for a time, then go for another transaction and then for first transaction in this way, concurrently it executes the transaction. So what is the use of concurrent execution? Anyone? Why concurrent execution is offered by most of the databases? What are the advantages of concurrent? The first advantage is that to put Increases means the number of transactions that execute in a particular time, it increases the direct number of transaction execution. And along with that, resource utilization if another, one transaction is using the CPU, another transaction may use the or perform the IO operation. And another major advantage is that the small transaction not necessary to wait for the large to complete it as it executes concurrently. But when we consider the concurrent execution, one of the important property of the transaction need to be preserved that is isolation. So what is isolation? While one transaction is updating the data item, another transaction cannot read that data item or cannot execute any operation on that data item. So that is isolation property of the transaction. So whenever we consider the concurrency control, the isolation must be preserved. So see, in the concurrency control, we are going to see some of the protocols that are used to obtain this concurrency or to control the concurrency. These are the schemes which are provided by the concurrency control scheme. Log-based protocol in which we are going to see the logs, granting of logs to protocol, log-based protocol, then multiple granularity, mm -hmm. timestamp based the protocol, L validation based the protocol. Okay. So concurrency control. As already I have told you that when several transactions executed concurrently in the database, the isolation property may no longer preserve. Many times what happens? It may not preserve. If isolation is not preserved, one transaction is updating a data item at the same time another transaction reads a data item, then what happens? It results in data inconsistency. So to preserve the data consistency, the isolation property needs to be preserved. So to ensure that it is to ensure this, the system must control the interaction among the concurrent transactions. And this is achieved by using variety of mechanisms for concurrency control schemes. And all these we are going to study in detail with different examples in this part. Now we are going to start first log based protocol. Okay. First concurrency control scheme that is log based protocol. The word used here log. See in the next unit we are going to use the word log, L-O-G log. And here log. So don't confuse between these two words log-based protocol. So what, what is this log-based protocol and what it provides? See, so one way to ensure isolation, we need to ensure isolation when we perform the concurrent execution to preserve the data as consistency. So one way to ensure isolation is to require that data items be assessed in mid-chain exclusive manner. 
mutual exclusion i think you studied this word in operating system oh yes correct yes no have you studied mutual exclusion in os okay the same method is used here that uh, data items are accessed in mutually exclusive manner that is while one transaction is accessing a data item no other transaction can modify the data item when one transaction is accessing a data item no other transaction can modify the data item means if transaction 2 is reading the data item a then transaction 1 is not allowed to modify data item b okay modification is not allowed while another transaction is accessing a data item so how it is possible so it is possible using the lock system using the lock system means for example suppose i the transaction t1 want to access the data item a transaction t1 want to access a data item a so in that case the what transaction perform the transaction first need to lock that data item need to lock that data item. so if transaction t1 lock the data item another transaction t2 cannot use that data item or not allowed to use that data item so that is the simple mechanism is used in lock based protocol t1 again suppose the transaction t1 want to use a data item a want to modify a data item a then it first need to acquire a lock on the data item a what transaction t1 acquire a lock on data item a the another transaction for example t2 cannot use it why because lock is acquired through transaction t1 so that simple method is used in lock based protocol so the most common method used to implement this requirement is to allow a transaction to access a data item only if it is currently holding a lock on that data item means if the transaction t1 hold a lock on data item a then that transaction can only use that data item modify that data item so that is the lock mechanism so here the lock mechanism is used to control the concurrent access to a data item there are two types of lock there are two types of locks shared lock and exclusive lock shared lock and exclusive lock so shared lock it is denoted with capital s there are two modes in which we lock the data item any data item a b or you can say q data item q so shared lock it is denoted with the capital letter s shared mode data item can only be read shared means the data item can only be read s lock is requested how to request it lock using the instruction lock s means if the transaction t1 if the transaction t1 want to access the data item a want to only read the data item okay want to only read the data item so in that case it required the lock s on data item a so once the instruction is executed the transaction t1 indicating that the transaction t1 lock the data item a in shared mode lock data item a in shared mode means the transaction t1 can only read the data item a not allowed to write only read the data item a another lock exclusive lock exclusive mode data item can be both read as well as written x lock is denoted with capital x x lock is requested using lock x instruction so again the same suppose the transaction t1 Want to read and write, perform both the operations on the data item B, on the data item the B. Then it make the instruction or execute the instruction lock X on data item B. So once this instruction is executed, then the data item B is locked by transaction T1. It is locked by transaction T1 in exclusive mode. Exclusive means T1 allowed to both read and write the data item B. T1 allowed to both read and write the data item B. Now see, and there are two locks, shared lock and exclusive lock. So always remember the difference. Shared lock is for reading only, and exclusive lock for only, uh, sorry, for both read and write. 
So this question normally asked for your oral. Explain log based protocol that we are going to see two phase locking protocol and these logs. So such kind of question normally asked in your oral. Now see log requests are made to the concurrency. Suppose transaction T1 want to access the data item P in exclusive mode. Means want to both read and write. Suppose the transaction T1 want to access the data item B in exclusive mode. Then where it make a request? It make a request to the concurrency control manager. And when the concurrency control manager grant the log, grant the log, then only transaction T1 can proceed and use that data item B in exclusive mode. Use the data item B in exclusive mode. So the transaction the T1 suppose want to access a data item B in exclusive mode, it makes a request to the concurrency control manager. Once the concurrency control manager grant it, then only transaction T1 can proceed. Use the data item B. Now, when yeah. we consider concurrency control, when we consider concurrency control, we need to preserve the isolation. Means while one transaction is updating a data item, another transaction cannot use that data item. So if there is an exclusive lock, means T1 can update the data item, he can write the data item B. So another transaction not allowed to access the data item B. If it is third mode, only perform the read. Then can any other transaction use the data item? Yes, it is allowed. Why? Because it is only sharing, only reading the data. So another transaction can also read the data item. Not necessary to wait. Is it clear? And that shown with compatibility matrix and it's a very important in concurrency control the compatibility matrix it is shown here so shared lock is compatible with the shared lock while shared lock is not compatible with exclusive lock exclusive lock is not compatible with exclusive means two transactions at a time can only read if one is reading another writing is not allowed if one is writing, another reading is not allowed. Writing, writing is not allowed. Only shared is compatible with the shared. Now see how this log is the protocol work. Okay. So transaction a log in an appropriate mode. In an appropriate. What is the meaning of appropriate? Suppose the transaction T1 only want to read the data item. So it requests only shared mode. If a transaction T1 want to read and both write, then it requests exclusive. So every transaction request a lock in an appropriate mode on data item Q. Depending on the type of operation that it will perform on the queue. If reading only shared, if both read and write, exclusion. It requests for exclusion lock. Now to whom it make a request? It make a request to the concurrency control manager. So the transaction makes the request to the concurrency control manager. Concurrency control manager check. Whether the data item is free, if it is free, then only concurrency control manager grants this log to the transaction. Okay, then only transaction can proceed with the operation. Then only transaction proceed with its operation. So for that, first the concurrency control manager must grant the log to the transaction. For example, suppose transaction T1, suppose Transaction T1 requesting a log S on that Q. If no other transaction is, if no other transaction is exclusive lock on that item Q, then the concurrency control manager grabs this lock to the transaction. If it is free, directly. Uh, allow or grant the law. Have you understood? The transaction can proceed with the operation only after the concurrency control manager grants the law to the transaction. For that, what the concurrency control manager need to see? Need to see whether that data item is locked by another transaction in incompatible mode. Okay, so see. So the use of these two locks, okay, first shared lock and exclusive lock. That concurrency control manager needs to check 
whether it is locked by another transaction if it is not locked by any other transaction the lock is directly granted but if it locked by another transaction in incompatible mode then the transaction need to be wait then the transaction need to be wait until the first transaction release the lock okay and therefore that the compatibility matrix is very important so a transaction may be granted a lock on the data item if the requested lock is compatible with the locks already held on the data item by other transaction if it is locked by other transaction in incompatible mode then in that case what we need to do we that transaction need to be wait the if a lock cannot be granted the requesting transaction is made to wait till all incompatible locks held by the transaction have been released and then the lock is granted again i show you one example suppose transaction t1 is holding a uh, or requesting lock s on data item a now it is start of a schedule no other transaction is lock on data item a so in that way it is granted okay because no other transaction is using a data item a now suppose transaction t2 another transaction t2 request a lock s on data item a whether it is granted yes or no have you understood my question first start with the transaction t1 which requesting a lock on data item a in shared mode and no other transaction is using a we consider and that's why it is granted now after transaction t2 requesting a shared mode lock on the data item a whether it will be granted by concurrency control t2 make a request to the concurrency control manager yes or no whether it is allowed yes so it is allowed why it is allowed because it is also granted why it is granted because shared mode is compatible with the shared mode. shared mode is compatible with the shared mode and that's why it is granted here that's why it is granted here but see suppose transaction 3 is requesting a lock x on data item a whether it is allowed is it is granted yes or no data item a yes it is not granted why because already this lock is uh, sorry all this data item is by another two transaction in non compatible mode why because shared mode is not compatible with the exclusive mode and that's why this lock is not granted and this transaction t3 has to wait and the lock is released on that data item by the previous transaction until it need to wait until the lock is released by previous transactions which are in incompatible mode so in this way the compatibility matrix is very important when the locks are granted by the concurrency control manager to the transaction now we move towards the next okay two, two examples we are going to start it with two example the first example that already we have seen transfer dollar 50 from account b to account a here the difference is that from account b to account a now see how actually the law or it executes so first see what is what happens here dollar 50 transfer from account b to account a so which data item the transaction need to be read first b a or a transfer dollar from account b to account a So it need to first read data item B. Only read operation is uh, sufficient, or we perform the write also. 
both. So we need to do both read and write. Why? Because it's updating the data item. And that's why which lock is required here? X or S? Exclusive or shared? X, correct. So here, first instruction lock X on data item B. Once it is locked up by transaction T1 on data item B or the concurrency control can grant this. Next perform, read the data item B. Remaining things are same. B is equal to B minus then write B. Now here the use of data item B is finished, correct? So another thing is that we need to unlock it and the instruction used to unlock is unlock data item B. So it unlock any of the lock. So once this is instruction is executed, it lock is released. Lock X is released on data item B. And that's why another transaction can now use it. After that, the next we need to read and write data item A. And that's why we need to lock the data item A. In which mode? Same. X. Because it performs both operations. Sorry. First, we need to read it. Read A. A is equal to A plus 50. Then write A. Now, its work is finished. So, we need to unlock it. So, use the instruction unlock A. So, once it is unlocked, now both are locker relation. So in this way, simple transaction is here. Only what we added here, remaining instruction already we have seen in the previous transaction. Only we have added here lock. So it first lock the data item B in exclusive mode, perform read and write, then unlock it. It lock the data item in exclusive mode, perform both read and write, and then unlock it. So these new instructions we have studied here, that is lock and unlock. Okay, so this is transaction T1. Now this next transaction T2. What it perform? Transaction T2 displays total amount of money in account A and B. Account A and B. So it need to read the value of A and read the value of B. So which lock is required here? Which lock is sufficient here? Exclusive or shared? Exclusion or shared. Correct. So here only lock sufficient that is shared mode. So first we lock in shared mode. Not necessary the exclusive ADP. Because perform only reading. It read the data item A, read the data item B and display the sum. Okay. Not going to store or write the sum value. Only display the sum. So lock. A in shared mode, read the value of A. Okay, unlock A. Then lock in shared mode data item B, read B. Then unlock B. Display A plus B. Okay, so in this way, simple. So lock S A, read A, unlock A, lock S B, and unlock A. Now, suppose we consider that these two, okay. Accounts A has 
hundred rupees and account B has two hundred rupees. So, if these two transactions executed serially, first transaction T one and then transaction T two, what the value of A plus B display? It display three hundred. Okay, if it is executed serially, we consider initially. A is equal to hundred, and B is equal to two hundred. Suppose these are executed serially. First, this transaction is executed. So here, the value of B becomes fifty, and here the value of A becomes one fifty. Okay. And after this, suppose T is executed. Then what value of A it reads? It reads one fifty. It reads one fifty for B, and what it display? If it is executed, if it executed in opposite way, first T one, T two, and then T one. What is the value of A? It reads if it execute opposite way, first T two and then T one. What the value of A? It reads. Any. This serial execution and all these already we have studied. A is equal to hundred and B is equal to two hundred. So it read the value of A hundred. Okay, and here it read the value of B two hundred. If T two execute first, and what value of A plus B display three hundred. Every time when we execute serially, it display the value three hundred because it's a serial execution. It not never result in data inconsistency. Serial execution always result in data consistency. Now suppose these are executed concurrently. Suppose these are executed concurrently. That we are going to see now the example with concurrent execution. So consider this schedule where these two. Transactions executed concurrently. Now the first transaction T one requesting a data item. Okay, it requests a data item lock on data item B. Already we have seen it perform both read and write operation, and that's why it required the exclusive lock on data item B. Now whether whether any transaction using a data item B, no, no other transaction using a data item B, and that's why concurrency control manager grant. This lock on data item B. Now T1 is using data item B in execution. Now it reads the value of B, perform B, write B, unlock B. Okay. Now suppose it executes then this one. Start with lock S A. So is this lock is granted? Yes, it is granted. Why? No other transaction is using a data item A, and that's why this lock is granted. Then it reads the value of B and lock A. Now, this T two is requesting a shared lock on data item B. Whether it is granted? Yes, it is granted. Why? Because it is already released by transaction T one. It is already released by transaction T one, and that's why it is allowed. Here, it is granted the data item B. It allowed the use by transaction T two in shared mode. Then it reads the value of B, unlock B, and display the value of A plus B. Then the concurrent execution switch here and start lock X A. Is it allowed? Yes, it is allowed. Why? Because it is unlocked by data item or the unlocked by transaction T two here already. Means it is free. Data item A is free, so it is. By transaction T one, the granted the lock by concurrency control manager, and it reads the value of A is equal to and perform and unlock. See, as already we have seen here, same values we are going to consider and going to see whether it result in data consistency, yes or no. So first consider A is equal to hundred, B is equal to two hundred. Okay. So here, we start with the transaction T one lock the data item B. As yes, we have seen that all these are executed properly. 
Why? Because no other transaction is using the data item in incompatible mode. And that's why these all are granted. Now see whether it, these execution, concurrent execution result in data consistency. For that we can say A is equal to 100, B is equal to 200. Now transaction T1 is requesting a exclusive lock on the data item B. Now while it requests A exclusive, it is granted what value of B it read? It read 200. It read 200 perform B is equal to B minus 50 and what value it write? 150. Now, the control goes here. It logs the data item A. To log the data item A in shared mode, it is granted. It read the value of A. What value of A T2 read here? Anyone? So here, read. Hundred. Okay. And what value of B it read here? Unlock A log data item b what value of b t read here t2 it's important what value of b t2 read here 150 correct and then display a plus b what is the value of a plus b 250 is it correct is it correct 250 it is wrong why because it requires 300 but it shows 250 means this result in data inconsistency this concurrent execution result in data inconsistency it happens because the data item are unlocked so early the data item are unlocked so early here it unlocked initially and that's why the transaction t2 can read it have you understood the problem why because T1 unlock data item B early, and that's why T2 read it and display the wrong value. And to avoid this kind of data inconsistency, another method is used that unlocking delay to the end of transaction. Unlocking delay to the end of transaction means at the end of transaction, the data item is unlocked. So instead of unlocking it here, instead of Unlocking is here, unlock data item B at the end, unlock data item A at the end. Similarly, here unlock A and unlock B at the end to avoid this of data inconsistency. Everyone clear why it happens? Because it is unlocked so early, and that's why it happens. And the, to avoid this, delay unlocking the delay to the end of the transaction. That is one method is used. Now see the most important part of this concurrency control. Here you can observe the transaction, two transaction T3 and T4. Okay, and some instructions are shown here. Now, when we start with this transaction T3, when we start with the transaction T3, it lock requests the lock on data item B is granted. Why it is granted? Because no other transaction is using a data item B. Now, read the value of b perform operation write the value of b okay now t4 transaction that same transactions are shown here t3 and t4 first law item a b it is allowed read the value of b perform write b and then start with the transaction t4 as a concurrent execution then it starts with the transaction t4 okay in transaction t4 what it requires it requires the shared lock on the data item A. It is granted. Why? Because no other transaction is using data item A. It reads the value of B and requests a shared lock on data item B. Whether it is allowed? Whether it is allowed? See, once again, I am repeating. T3 start with lock on data item B. Requesting exclusive lock. It is allowed. Why? Because no other transaction is using that data item read value write the value whatever perform then t4 started execution request a shared lock on data item a it is allowed why because no other transaction is using a now t4 requesting a date shared lock on data item b whether it is allowed here yes or no not allowed why because is already locked 
by transaction T3 in exclusive mode, which is incompatible with the shared mode. And that's why this lock is not granted here. That's why this lock is not granted here. This lock is not granted here. Not now. Now, T4, this after T4, it goes to T3. And execution goes to T3 and start to our request exclusive lock on data item A. Whether it is allowed? It is allowed. It is requesting a shared lock on data item. Whether it is allowed? Not allowed. Why? Because already it is shared by another transaction in shared mode. And that's why this lock is not allowed. Why? Because it is incompatible. Shared is incompatible with exclusion. Now, what happens here? See here, transaction T3, sorry, T4 is waiting for data item B to release the lock by transaction T3. Okay, means T4 is waiting for T3 to release the lock and T3 is waiting for T4 to release the lock. See once again. Here, T3 is, wait, T4 is waiting for T3 to release the lock, okay? And T4 is waiting for, T3 is waiting for T4 to release the lock. T4 is waiting for T3 to release the lock and T3 is waiting for T4 to release the lock. And in this way, no other transaction proceed with its execution. No other transaction, no other transaction is Proceed with its normal execution, and that condition is known as deadlock. What we call it as a deadlock. That one transaction is waiting for another transaction to release the lock, and another transaction is waiting for first transaction to release the lock. And this situation is called deadlock. So, what to perform once a deadlock happens? In that case, there are simple method roll back the transaction and Restarting. Once it is rolled back, restart the lock acquired by any one of the transaction roll back, not both. Any one of the, tra the transaction roll back. And once it is rolled back, suppose I re roll back this transaction. Okay. So in that case, the lock really acquired by this transaction are automatically released. So it released this B and it is acquired by transaction T4 and start the execution of transaction T4. So once the transaction has back the data item that were locked by the transaction are unlocked and these data items can be used by another transaction or available to another transaction to you or continue their execution so this is about the date lock so there are so many different algorithms available to detect the date lock also there are so many algorithms to avoid the date lock or to release from the date lock but we are not going to study in detail because already it is in operating system also so only here the concept of date lock we are going to study. And this question is normally asked for the oral. What is mean by date lock? So simple, you can explain with this simple example. Or the definition is that while first transaction, second transaction is waiting for first transaction to release the lock, and first transaction is waiting for second transaction to release the lock, then either both of the transactions no longer proceed with its normal execution. That situation is called deadlock. And how to release from the deadlock? Roll back any one of the transactions. Once it is rolled back, the data items that are locked by the transactions are all are that are at this point of pitfalls of lock based protocol that we are going to see. One of the major disadvantage of lock based protocol that is starvation. That is starvation. Now see what is meant by starvation. Suppose, see, look, uh, uh, sorry, look at the screen very carefully and also listen it because it's a very simple concept but we need to understand. Now suppose transaction T2, the transaction T1 has shared lock on data item A. And it is granted. It is granted. Okay. Then 
Suppose transaction T1 acquired a shared lock on data item A. It is granted. Next transaction T2 is requesting lock X on the data item A. It will be granted. Yes or no? Hmm? It is not granted. Why? Because both are not compatible. In meanwhile, meanwhile, suppose transaction T3 is requesting a lock S on data item A. Whether it is granted? Yes or no? Whether it will be granted? Have you understood my question? See once again, transaction T1 acquired shared lock on data item A. Transaction T2 requesting the exclusion lock on data item B, but it is not granted. Why? Because these are compatible. Meanwhile, if transaction T3 is requesting a shared lock on data item A, it will be granted? Yes or no? And it will be granted. Why it will be granted? Because it is compatible with the previous one. Okay, it is compatible. And it is not granted and that's why it needs to be wait. It needs to wait. Okay, now sub in between, in between the transaction T1 release the lock. Transaction T1 release the lock. Okay, in between this lock is released by transaction T1. But T2 has to wait for T3 now. Why? Because it is granted to T3. Now, after that, both T4 is requesting a lock S on data of A. Whether it is allowed, whether it is granted, yes, it is granted. Why it is granted? Because it is compatible with this T3 and that's why it is granted. Next, after this, suppose, this lock is released by transaction T3, but now T2 has to wait for T2 to release it. Meanwhile, in the next transaction T4, T5 requesting a data item, the same data item in shared mode. Again, it is granted. Why? Because it is a compatible. Meanwhile, T4 is it. Meanwhile, T4 is it. Suppose. But T2 wait for now T5 to lock. And in this way, suppose n number of transactions, T2, T3, T5, whatever, n number of transactions are requesting a shared lock, then all the locks will be granted. Why? Because shared lock is compatible with shared lock. And in that case, T2 never get the lock. T2 never get the lock and it remains in waiting state. It remains in waiting state. And that is known as starvation. That is known as starvation. So that is here for explain. So the concurrency control manager can be designed to prevent the starvation. For that, the simple mechanism is used. When a transaction TI requests a lock on data item Q in a particular mode M, exclusion or shared, the concurrency control manager grants the lock in this way. There is no other transaction holding a lock on data item Q in a mode that is incompatible with M. Okay? And there is no other transaction is waiting for lock Q and that made lock before TI. So not allowed to T3. T2 is waiting. So it asks the T3 to wait and release the lock first, give the lock to the T and avoid the search. So locking protocol, what we uh, define a locking protocol in this way? A locking protocol is a set of rules followed by all the transactions while requesting and releasing the locks. Locking protocol protocol restrict the set of possible schedules. So 
working protocol is nothing but the set of rules that followed by all the transaction while requesting and releasing the lock okay so next lecture we will see the next protocol that is two phase locking protocol